Hi, I'm Dave here. So quite a long time ago I made a video about uh, uh, the ghosting a CRT and I made it uh, high speed so you can actually see the image just uh, warping and uh, distorting on the CRT which is actually quite cool. So today I'm going to actually uh, in detail uh, show you how actually the ghosting works and uh, why you you actually must have a uh, the ghosting coil on the CRT alright so in order to talk about uh, the degaussing uh, you just need to talk a little bit about the principle working of the CRT itself alright so let's get started I have here my trusty Sony Trinitron uh, Multiscan uh, CRT I'm going to explain you very briefly how this actually works. Alright, CRT is actually a cathode ray tube and uh, it's just a tube. Uh, you can actually imagine it uh, as a very, not, not really complicated, but a long uh, vacuum tube. Alright, just like the tubes you find in a old radio or uh, guitar amplifier. Alright, it's just a tube. In fact, there are many many common elements inside right there is on the neck here starting here there is a little filament that heats up and uh, gets the electron uh, actually exci excited and uh, there are some uh, electron guns so ele uh, electron emitters and uh, in color TV uh, there are actually three uh, of those electron emitters so Three, why three? Well, that's very simple. Just one for red, one for green, and the other for blue. All right. So those uh, beams just uh, get excited by the uh, actual um, filament and travel through the whole tube and hit the phosphor screen that is on the front. All right. So on the um, on the front there is a big phosphor screen all right the most simple CRT you can find is the CRT in the, in a um, in an analog oscilloscope it's very very simple there is only one beam or two if you have a dual trace and uh, just shoots the electrons to a phosphor screen that is this one is a little bit more complicated but the principle is just that is the, the the electrons traveling through the uh the, the tube and then hitting a phosphor screen that is divided in pixels right in little uh, uh phosphor dots right and uh yeah in order to do that you need something that actually excite the electrons and make them travel through the the actual screen itself all right that is done with high voltage here the, the anode is actually this uh, red wire so the um, the actual beams the electrons actually I should call it um, just travel through those coils here and those coils are respectively the um, focusing coil this uh, huge round uh, coil here is the focusing coil and uh, inside here there is the deflection coil so uh, by varying the uh, the magnetic field you can actually focus the beams all right and uh, inside here there are the deflection coils I actually have a deflection coil here let me take it out so here is an example of the deflection coils you can actually see how that is actually made. You can see the coils are separated here, and uh, so the beams travel through here and it gets uh, deflected depending on the uh, magnetic field that is um, present. So varying the uh, the actual magnetic field, you can actually uh, move the, the beams. And uh, here is done very, very rapidly. It's very, very fast. So you can actually uh, scan the uh, the electrons uh, through the screens. 
All right, moving on, you have your uh, beans coming up there, and then there is a little mask here, and that's what uh, we are interested in: the red, uh, blue, and uh, and green beams. They actually pass through tiny little holes and uh, gets uh, to the phosphor screen. Well, the mask sometimes can be magnetized because the ma mask is actually some kind of metal, all right? So, can be magnetized and uh, magnetization on your CRT screen is not good because you will see your image distorted, right? So, in order to demagnetize the uh, the mask, well, the, the most simple way to do it is pass uh, a coil around the mask and uh, pass a huge amount of current to uh, demagnetize completely the mask itself. All right. So this is the goal scene in a nutshell. It's just very very simple. It's that uh, helps to uh, demagnetize the mask and uh, have your image uh, sharp again. The degaussing coil here that is just so a bunch of very thick wires uh, wrap around some tape. If you ever wondered what are those little things, those are little ferrite magnets that uh, actually were uh, put during assembly and uh, those are to actually calibrate the screen uh, so you, you, you have a perfectly um, undistorted image. Alright, the circuitry is very very simple. It actually switches uh, for a very very brief period of time and alternate the current uh, through the coil itself. Older models uh, that was done using a PTC and a, um, and a uh, heating element a resistor all right, so when you first turn on the CRT, a strong current will pass through the uh, the coils, and um, then after a brief moment, the heating element heats up the PTC, and the PTC limits the current flowing through the actual coil itself. Uh, this is not really efficient because some current will always pass through the coil. And uh, in order to get another degaussing, you need to uh, switch it off and uh, let it cool uh, for a for a moment. And um, uh, in later models like this, uh, the uh, the degaussing is uh, controlled by a relay, as you can see here. This relay, uh, when you turn on the power, will uh, actually be active, so uh, current can pass through the the coil. And then after a moment, we'll actually switch off, so no current will flow. So that's very efficient, and you can actually turn on and off uh, the degaussing from a menu. Degaussing can be done manually if there is a strong magnetization of the mask. So uh, you can actually have a, uh, a very strong coil and um, just uh, move it around um to the screen and uh manually uh they goes the 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 c r t uh, but uh you have to be really quite careful because if the current is too much so the magnetic field is too much you could actually permanently physically damage the actual mask itself so physically warp the mask so you would end up having a very very unclear image with uh, not good uh, colors actually so because the actual beams will not uh, um, uh, pass through the actual holes anymore and uh, will end up losing uh, quite a lot of color definition so here we go that's very cool and here is the relay switching. All right, so let's see this thing in action. So I, I have a uh, current probe attached to the coil, and a um, so the oscilloscope is in single mode.
So let's see if I can capture something. And here we go. So, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.